So our presentation tonight is by our very own Casey Brisbane. Evening, fellow compatriots, guests, and prospective members. I am your Vice President Casey Brisendine of the Grand Bay Later Chapter, and tonight I bring you a short story about my 10th great grandfather, Edward Doty, who signed the Mayflower Compact in 1620, to my 6th great grandfather, Captain Lieutenant Samuel Doty Sr., who served in the American Revolution. My 10th great grandfather, Edward Doty, was born on May 14, 1598 in England. He married Faith Clark Doty and they had three children together. He also has six children from another relationship after Faith passed away. He was an adventurous man. He had sailed to America a few times aboard other vessels before coming over on the Mayflower in 1620. He came over as a servant of his uncle Stephen Hopkins. His uncle listed them as a servant along with Edward Easter so that they could receive more land. The law didn't consider a nephew as immediate family, but they considered servants as immediate family. He signed the Mayflower Compact in 1620. The Mayflower Compact, originally titled The Agreement Between the Settlers and New Plymouth, was the first governing document of Plymouth Colony. It was written by the men aboard the Mayflower, consisting of separatist Puritans, adventurers, and tradesmen. Although the agreement contained a pledge of loyalty to the king, the Puritans and other Protestant separatists were dissatisfied with the state of the Church of England, the limited extent of the English Reformation, and the reluctance of King James I of England to enforce further reform. He died on August 23, 1655, in Plymouth, Massachusetts, at the age of 57, and was buried there. And then my ninth great grandfather, Lieutenant Samuel Doty, born on August 27, 1643, in Plymouth, Massachusetts. His father, Edward, was 45, and his mother, Faith, was 24. He married Jane Harmon on November 13, 1678, at Piscataway, New Jersey. They had 10 children in 28 years. He died on September 18, 1750, at Piscataway, New Jersey, at the age of 72, and was buried in Edison, New Jersey. Samuel Doty is in the town records of Piscataway, Middlesex County, New Jersey, where in 1675 he was commissioned lieutenant of the military company of New Piscataway, of which Francis Drake was captain, his commission being renewed in 1678. He was also a Seventh-day Baptist. They kept the law as written in the, in the Torah, led a kosher lifestyle, and kept the Sabbath. It is evident from the record that he was intelligent, industrious, and thrifty, a man of ability and authority, as appears by his selection as lieutenant of the military company soon after his arrival to Piscataway. And, and yet a blameless life, an affectionate husband and father, and a consistent member of the church. The sterling character of his children and their uniformly upright Christian lives show good training on the part of their parents and that patriotism was one of the virtues emulated is evident by the services of his immediate descendants in the Indian Wars of 1756 and the Revolution. When my eighth grade grandfather, Samuel Doty, was born on August 27, 1679, in Piscataway, New Jersey, his father, Samuel, was 36 and his mother, Jane, was 19. He married Elizabeth Hall in 1700 in New Jersey. They had nine children in 21 years. He died on May 5th, 1741, in his hometown at the age of 61. He was the oldest son of his parents, and his cattle mark was entered into the town records at Piscataway, New Jersey, April 26th, 1701, his name being written as Samuel Doty with two T's and E and a Y. He was undoubtedly at this time given a farm at Piscataway by his father, and the tradition of the family is that he led a quiet, blameless life there an intelligent, thrifty, conscientious neighbor and friend. He was also a member of the Seventh-day Baptist Church of the town. In 1739, his name appears as witness to the deeds to his son and nephews in Somerset County, New Jersey. His father conveyed in a deed dated November 1st, 1690, certain lands at the Scataway to Isaac Smalley. The deed had not been acknowledged before the magistrate, but the signature of the grantor was acknowledged. In 
in 1746 by his eldest son, Samuel Doty, who at that time was living in Morris County, New Jersey, near the forts of Delaware, and is not easy to locate this exact spot. But it was probably within the limits of present Warren County, New Jersey, and not far from Phillipsburg. At this, at this date, Morris County included within its limits not only its present domain, but the whole of the present Sussex and Warren counties. Morris having been laid out from the old Hunter Inn County about 1730. When my seventh great grandfather, John Doty, was born on July 16, 1709, in Piscataway, New Jersey, his father, Samuel, was 29, and his mother, Elizabeth, was 29. He married Anne Reese, and they had five children together. He then married O.C. Agatha Skillman, and they had six children together. In 1757, during the French and the Indian War, he was a guard, I'm sorry, a guard of 120 effective men was mustered from county militias to defend the frontiers of the colony in New Jersey. John Doty served as a private in this guard from June until he and Otho Mahurin were killed by Indians near the Delaware River on November 9th, 1757. When my sixth great grandfather, Samuel Doty Sr. was born in 1733 in Baskin Ridge, New Jersey, his father, John, was 24, and his mother, Anne, was 23. He married Keturah Levy Newman in 1753 in his hometown. They had 10 children together in 30 years. He died in 1817 in Butler County, Ohio, having lived a long life of 84 years. Captain Lieutenant Samuel Doty was a signer of the Declaration by sundry inhabitants of Queens County, New York, the 19th of January, 1776. He first appears in the Continental Service as second lieutenant in the Second Continental Artillery Regiment on the 1st of January, 1777. The regiment was authorized on that date as Lamb's Continental Artillery Regiment and was raised chiefly in New York and New Jersey, although two companies were credited to Philadelphia City and County, and Lyndon Eggles stated that Doty was from Philadelphia, but it's possible that he entered service from that city. On the 19th of June, 1780, Doty and three other officers of Lamb's Regiment, William Power, James McClure, and Robert Parker, petitioned Congress that their companies be annexed to the 4th Continental Regiment, Colonel Thomas Proctor of Pennsylvania. They complained that their unattached companies suffered from lack of pay and rations, a complaint possibly stemming from the nature of artillery strategy at that time. It was not, however, until the general reorganization of the Army on the 1st of January, 1781, that Doty and other officers of two of Lamb's companies were attached to the 4th Artillery. The regiment rendezvoused at York in May, 1781, marched to Virginia, and was in the Yorktown campaign. There, however, the artillery concern with the siege was chiefly the French heavy train. At least some elements of the Pennsylvania artillery accompanied Wayne in his Georgia expedition. But after Yorktown detachments, they were sent back to Philadelphia, Lancaster, and Harlem. It is therefore difficult to designate precise service assignments. Doty was promoted to <coughs> lieutenant on the 7th of October, 1781. By June of 1783, the regiment had apparently been dismissed um, of their service. As Oxford Township was developing in the mid-1800s, a cluster of farmsteads near its northern border developed and was designated as the Doty Settlement. As was the custom, the, the community took its name from a prominent family in the area. In or near the settlement were a church, a cemetery, a school, a blacksmith's shop, a sawmill, a distillery, a furniture shop, and a pulling mill for cleansing, shrinking, and thickening cloth. With the frontier spirit of self-reliance, it was seldom necessary to travel several miles into the Oxford village for additional goods and services. Working together, the community farm local fields and bartered for other items. Men, women, and children worked long, hard hours in the fields, harvesting corn and wheat. It is evident that these families living in an agricultural society possessed many useful skills for surviving in the Ohio country. In conclusion, Heroes and patriots in the United States are made every day, a fact that has occurred since the first man set foot on the soil of this great nation. 
and the smallest deeds of kindness to the brave soldiers that have given their lives for their country. Their stories and histories are varied, their actions and deeds diverse, leaving their marks on every part of our culture and heritage. They are law officers, politicians, soldiers, inventors, explorers, artists, activists, writers, business people, and ordinary folks. Some are famous, but most are not. The Dodies eventually left Butler County and settled in Fortville, Indiana. They owned over 200 acres of land in Hancock County. My family also fought the Civil War on the Union side with Ulysses S. Grant. They helped slaves reach their freedom through the Park 70 Underground Railroad. And in 1846, my third great-grandfather, Charles Edward Doty, went on to charter the first Rebecca Lodge of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows in Fort Mill. I want to encourage everyone to look into your ancestry and the history of your families and write your stories because we love you.